All right, here we are again. I'm back at the workbench. Since I've got the thing disassembled, I decided that I was going to start sanding things down. But this video is about finishing off the vise, and uh, I have finished off the vise, so what we're going to be seeing today is me reassembling everything and basically being done. <laughs> it's kind of necessary because I want to do use this bench for my next project. So enjoy the video of how I got to this point. So I've had to take the bench apart now so that I can get to this mark and more safely cut the uh, mortise on the lay on the stretcher which I'm going to be using this to do most of the rough out work just because this is slightly less than three quarters of an inch for the mortise I don't want to use a three quarter inch chisel I don't want that mortise to be loose so I'm going to be uh, cutting it out with the router There's a little bit of a gap here because my router did not go wet quite as deep. <laughs> so I can correct that by just taking off a little from the edge here. Now, another little bit of business. This is the mortise for fitting the backer, and I cut it in the wrong spot the last time. I cut it this far over. So I'm gonna, I've, I've filled this in, I'm just gonna cut that off and uh, maybe fill in some of these gaps with some uh, glue and sawdust. But this is a workbench, not a showpiece. So let me get this going. So I've got a line etched right here that is going to be the uh, angle for the dovetail. And you're there. All right, so set this in here make my mark and then transfer that mark all the way down well, I want it to slide in and be held I don't want it to be so tight that it eventually can't be removed I think that's what I want right there Right, so I will cut this off and then trim this down, but the next step is also to cut this out so that it can be the stay. And then I got to figure out, I took the hole saw that I used to cut the original hole, that gives me my upper limit, I just sort of hammered it in. And then I measured, by holding this up against it, the depth of the gap in the bar or in the screw that this has to press up against and so that leaves this as the amount that I have to remove that's a lot easier that hole is off center that's fine I'm gonna be cutting that hole out anyways pardon my shadow so what I've done here after shaping this thing down I gave it a half inch. I used a half inch router bit to make this and then I made my marks off of that to get this. Then I took another piece of that walnut and proceeded to mess it up real badly, but it works, <laughs> to create an insert that's going to go in there. It's not going to be a beautiful, perfect insert, but it's going to do the job. 
And then when I tap that down, got a little bit extra there. Good. When I tap that down, I've already tested this against the um, other piece, the uh, screw. So now I just got to cut out the bottom part here. But I also have to cut this down to be just about the same level as this inner piece. that to the sander. Smooth that out. Okay. Doesn't have to be perfect yet, but and part of the reason why I wanted this to be adjustable up here is because there's an alignment issue. I haven't cut... You see, it's not going through straight. I haven't quite cut this deep enough to allow this to move this way so that when this comes down on top it's all nice and secure so I've got to just cut out a little bit more here and that's why it needs to be removable so that I can do all that and there we have it now the screw goes in does not bind up anywhere it's secure in there's about a quarter of inch of slop and if I want to I could take those other pieces that I have and screw them in there but I'm not gonna worry about that right now uh, so there it is. This is assembled. Now I just got to put the handle on. And that takes a little time because I got to sand that thing down into a round shape. So now, from this outside edge to the outside of the hole, it's roughly two and a half inches. So I'm going to put this at roughly two and a half inches. This is what, what I'm going to cut off. I will drill through, bore through, and insert the handle into that. So in the last video I used a piece of wood, but then I found this piece of pipe. And I happen to have the fittings for it, so that's going to do the job. That's going to be my handle. And so I sighted along the handle and found this line is center. So now I do the side measurements and I will find exact center. Whole board, that was a whole bit of drama. And I've got it uh, shimmed to straight the only hole size I had was the hole size I used for boring through so there was a gap and I'm going to be using this extra heavy-duty um, epoxy two-part epoxy it's 50-50 uh, uh, it comes out black so I'm assuming that it was used for roofs or something like that but it works fine here but the temperature on the cans the lower temperature is lower than what I would have overnight so I'm gonna wait till tomorrow to glue this on and then final assembly begins Straight that way, crooked that way. But no time to stop, no time to worry about it. So I've drilled holes in this to facet it on the backer and I'm gonna be done. Let's get it assembled.
we go. on this works the way it's supposed to. This is off by quite a bit and that's probably because the nut is off. Oh so I mean I'm gonna have to one day revisit this. But for now it's assembled and it's ready. Everything out of, is out of square here. Doesn't operate as smooth. Oh, that's why. I could probably square this up a little bit. But this hole can probably get a little bit deeper, a little bit larger. And that will allow this to, because it's going in like this, rather than like this. Oh yeah, I forgot the pin down at the bottom. It's supposed to be a pin in the pinholes down here at the bottom. Come on. Are you kidding me? has just failed. Everything has just failed. The wood here is breaking. Rather than holding this back, it's breaking. I might have to go back in and indeed Redo all of this, because there's the screw coming right out. It actually tapped the wood out. This is the same down here. I have to uh, widen this out a little bit, but then it slides right in there, and wherever this ends up, based on the screw, I will screw that in to hold it in place. And here we have it. It looks like it's working the way it's supposed to. I won't really know that until I get it installed. Get this in here. So. And. There. Like 
So, looks like the screw is going in kind of wonky. So, let's see about adjusting it, but just a tad. Oh, and that was part of the problem, wasn't it? What's going on is the nut is what's pulling this back away from the face. And that, in part, is keeping everything out of line. And let's see how that works. The screw is flexible now in that position. That's good. So, let's see about the top. Top goes down there. Top goes down there. All right. Let's see how this performs. Oh, let me not forget to put in the pin. I'll put it in at a near spot right now just to see what it does. Wow, that's wobbly. I made that hole way too large to compensate for the excess wobble. But... So, just a quick update. I snug down the screw here and then set this at an angle because before it was straight up and down. But the thing that I should have done was cut out a notch right here for this to sit into, just like the plans had called for. That would have stopped all of that problem. So that's for you to remember. Cut out a notch for this nut. Whatever nut you're using, whether it's a wood nut or a metal nut like this, cut out a notch so that this and this flush out. As you can see now, there's still a little bit of wobble. But it's far less than what it was. I can still put in a bit of a, a bit of a bushing to take up some of that space. But a lot of the rest of the wobble is taken out when I finally get this thing kind of squared up to the face. Right there you see where it's rubbing, and that is causing more wobble. So I get that taken care of, and everything is going to work. And so there we have it. Uh, a lot more hopeful end, ending to this video than what I had previously recorded. It took me two days to stay away from this project to come up with that solution. And it's working fine and everything else that I do to make this, state, to fine tune this is gonna work it even better. So that means that my Moravian workbench is done. Now I was thinking about taking an, a face vise that I have on hand and using it as a tail vise, but I'm not certain that I want to do that. I can plane things along the surface using uh, very long bench hooks, things that already have holes drilled in them and pegs in them so that I could fit things down, use wedge, wedges to t uh, bind them in. Because this bench top has developed a severe check right where I would put a tail vise. And I'm not sanguine about drilling holes all along the length where there's such a severe check. So I'm gonna find other solutions. Those, uh, uh, like, a, like I just said, a bench long bench hook. And then of course, little bench hooks that go across the, the, the width of the bench so that I can cut smaller items, plain smaller items, create a uh, genuine shooting board that fits in. Uh, I have the vise working now so the shooting board could fit into the vise. There are a lot of things that I can do now. But now this bench is ready, ready for my next project. And it's a project that I have been planning since the middle of December. And I'm hopefully going to have, well, I won't announce it, but I'm expecting something of a collaboration. So you'll just have to wait to see what that is. <laughs> Until then, have a great day.